telling yourself the story that you have been traumatized will never serve you. Never. Okay, that is a story you're telling yourself. So when we watch a movie, we know those characters aren't real. We know that. Neither is yours. It's just as fake. It's a story you tell yourself. Because as soon as you question it, it disappears. Yes, but RJ, I was trying to, is that helping you? Saying that to yourself over and over again, is that helping you? If the story doesn't serve your highest good, stop saying it to yourself. These experiences allow you to actually tangibly realize that you're still totally fine. What we are is untouched by everything. This is the this is the only truth that we really need to know. And the analogy that I always use is the sun, right? It doesn't matter how bad the weather is, rain, sleet, snow, tornado, hurricane, for how long it goes on, days, weeks, months, years, decades, centuries, does any of that touch the sun? <laughs> the sun is untouched, unsullied, and unscathed, no matter what goes on with the weather. Okay. If you want to use the word soul, that's fine. Your soul is untouched, unscathed by whatever goes on with the body mind. That's the most important thing to understand. That's number one. Everyone is eternally whole, complete, divine, and untouched. Perfect. Everyone. Forever and ever and ever. Now, is the body mind affected by things? Of course it is. Of course, I was paralyzed, right? So is the, is the body mind affected by things? Absolutely, but you're not the body mind. Okay, so when all this is coming up, whether Jason having a hard time, me being paralyzed, at the, I don't care what it is. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It only matters to the ego mind. It doesn't matter. Let it all come up. It doesn't belong to you. These are trinkets that you bought when you got here. Oh, yeah, I'm going to buy into that perspective. I'm going to buy into that. I'm going to grab a hold of that and carry that on. Now, because it's not you, eventually it wears yourself down. So all these uncomfortable feelings, whatever they are, whatever they're about, they don't touch you. You're the sun. You're fine forever. I promise you. You just might not know it yet, and that's okay. That's okay. I do. You are fine. So whatever is coming up, let it come up. Allow it to come up. Don't grab it. Oh my God, let me figure this out. Let me ruminate on this. Let me get, let me call my therapist. Let me Google it. Let me uh, let me ask RJ. <laughs> so don't need to do that. Let it come up. It doesn't belong to you and let it go. That's it. Don't complicate it. The ego mind complicates everything. It grabs a hold of everything and then tries to figure it, figure things out. That actually only increases the issues because by thinking about things is how you got in this rut in the first place. It's by thinking about things. So everybody, let everything come up. It doesn't belong to you. Let it go. Trauma doesn't, that story, telling yourself the story that you have been traumatized will never serve you. Never. Okay, that is a story you're telling yourself. And whatever story you tell yourself, you are spelling yourself. I'm not saying these, these things didn't occur. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all. I could easily say I, I was traumatized in this life with what my body went through, right? Pains, all this, uh, right? It was my liberation. I didn't tell myself a story. I play a violin for myself. I didn't do that. I could have, right? Okay. I did the opposite. It's like, this is my chance. I'm totally liberated now. These experiences allow you to actually tangibly realize that you're still totally fine. The highest use of the highest use of suffering is to engender courage, humility, and grace. Now, if that's not happening for you, then you have wasted your suffering. Allow it to liberate you by letting it go. Allow it to liberate by letting it go go and stop telling yourself a story which is putting a spell over yourself if merlin was here huh he would say you're spelling yourself stop the voice in your head is the spell you're putting on yourself if the story doesn't serve your highest good stop saying it to yourself 
is what about emotions trapped in the body and uh how do we how do we uh get rid of those or just as detachment is detachment or becoming the awareness sitting in the pristine awareness enough to to release that stuff okay that's a great question uh so no, nothing is actually trapped in the body that is a uh, uh an, an unawakened perspective so nothing is trapped there now they they stay there because they're 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 never allowed to leave okay we keep we keep things stuck within our energy field because we keep our attention upon these things from an unawakened state so in other words if we keep saying to ourselves as an example if we keep saying to yourself i'm so traumatized i'm so wounded by what my dad did etc cetera, etc cetera. i'm so hurt upset etc cetera, et cetera. okay well you're keeping it alive so you're keeping that within you you're keeping that within your consciousness and therefore your body of energy right so when uncomfortable emotions feelings come up you have to let it come up and it will just leave because it doesn't belong to you you don't actually have to do anything this is part of the paradigm shift by obsessing and talking about it you're feeding it energy you're keeping it there hence uh you know psychotherapy talk about a racket right okay so that's why there's no end result oh you need to see me for 10 years 20 right because what we're doing is we're actually keeping it within our consciousness and our body of energy, which is why it never leaves, which is that there's actually no healing. Only the truth heals. So anything that is so-called trapped is not really trapped. It's just that we haven't had the courage to sit still, let it come up and let it go. And it will all on its own. It will all on its own. And if you're having issues with that, just do the ascend the frequencies healing technique, just like with the thought. Okay, to whom has this thought arisen to me? I'm the one having this thought. Who am I? Do the same thing with your emotions, right? If you're upset, hurt, sad, angry, right? Let's, let's say sad, right? You're feeling sad. It's just ask yourself, who is it that feels sad? The answer you'll get is, well, me, I do. I'm the one who feels sad. Who am I? Now, as we do that together, if you're very detached and out of your mind, like I am, you'll actually feel energy move. <coughs> you'll actually feel it. It's it's tan it's immediate it's tangible now I have put a lot of effort and energy into my own evolution so these things are apparent to me uh, immediately okay but the truth is still the truth so when you actually question the emotion sadness well who is it that feels sad well me I do I'm the one who feels sad who am I you'll actually feel an expansion uh, in your lower your your lower what's called the dantiana just beneath the belly button above the groin you'll actually start to feel this happen. Okay, that is the release of stored emotions because you're giving yourself a chance to experience what it is that you've been afraid of, what it is that you've been denying. And as soon as you allow yourself to experience it, because it doesn't belong to you, it will leave because it doesn't belong to you. So all you have to do is actually allow yourself to feel these things and you'll realize that you're the awareness of the feeling and as you realize you're the awareness, you'll actually start to tangibly feel it just do this. And it'll just leave you because it's not part of you. It's not germane to you. But it's by identifying with it, ruminating on it, talking about it endlessly, you keep it alive. So it's just the opposite. When it comes up, question it. You'll realize it's not you. And in that conscious realization that it's not you, it will leave but only in the conscious realization that is not you because only the truth heals. So your conscious realization that you are not that sadness and you are not that experience is what is how the healing actually takes place. And so we must allow it to come up by questioning the misidentification with it by just realizing that who is it that feels sad? Well, me, I'm the one who feels sad. Who am I? And you'll realize you're not the character that is identified with that situation and you'll actually just feel it leave you. This is part of the beauty and the power of, of the ascend the frequencies healing technique yes but rj i was trying to is that helping you saying that to yourself over and over again, is that helping you or does it just make you further and further entrenched in being upset then it doesn't serve you it's that simple do you feel unburdened liberated lighter joyous that works do that or is the story you're telling yourself to, I've been traumatized, I have been victimized, I have been hurt. How are you feeling as you say that to yourself? Just mm -hmm. use the tangibility of it. That's all. Your proof is in the tangibility. As you say these things to yourself, how do you feel? Worse? 
or better? Lighter or heavier? Happier or more sad and angry? That's all. Use the tangibility of the experience. You'll know for yourself. The story that we tell ourselves dictates the entire reality that we create for ourselves. You have to tell yourself a different story. The best story to tell yourself is no story. None. Fully accept yourself. Warts and all. Accept yourself so fully that you can effortlessly be present. There's nothing to work on. There's nothing to fix. Nothing to become. Nothing to acquire. That is the way. And you're already it. So when you're attached to something, I don't care what it is, a person, a, a belief, uh, an experience, your pain, your diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you're attached to anything, you you are powerless. Okay. And I'll, I'll give, uh, Shay knows I love silly analogy. So we'll go to our first silly analogy uh, because I like to joke around anyway. So, but uh, these analogies can be very helpful. Okay. Uh, let's let's talk about like a scary movie when we watch a scary movie okay we've all probably watched a scary movie right okay so let let's look at this from a metaphysical perspective okay because it's very telling and it's very empowering to really understand the metaphysics of what's actually happening okay so we're watching a scary movie right so our attention and your attention is your energy where your attention goes your energy flows okay so we're watching a scary movie on the screen okay now i i realize our physical senses don't see our energy okay but the higher mind can actually see this and actually feel this as well all right so if our attention is on the scary movie so literally we are connecting with this screen with our energy there's actual an energetic cord or cords that actually get attached to what's on the screen because we're getting caught up with what's going on. We're identifying, we're putting ourselves in the situation, right? Okay. So we have our energy now is on the screen. It's stuck to the screen. Now, whatever happens on the screen, you are affected by it because your energy is stuck to it. So think about this. Something happens on a screen and you get scared, right? How does that work? Okay. We now understand that's how that works. It's through the metaphysics of your actual energy being connected. There's an energetic cord. You do this with people, with events, concepts, beliefs, experiences, and that's the problem, by the way. Okay. Non-attachment or detachment is the remedy and the only remedy. Okay. So we have, we're stuck to the screen. Whatever happens on the screen, we, we then have that experience. Okay. Now let's bring this all the way back to thoughts, emotions, and bodily sensations. Okay. If you are identifying with your thoughts, whatever your thoughts are, you're then going to have the experience. Same with the emotions, same with the body. It's because you're identifying with it. Okay. Let's go back to the horror movie. Okay. So we're watching the horror movie, our energy, our attention is stuck to it. Whatever happens, we then have the experience of it. Okay. Now let's pretend that that horror movie is boring, that you're not into it. Okay. You're not totally engrossed in it. You're not putting yourself in there. Stupid plot. And most of them are stupid. But anyway, so let's just say it's now, it's now a boring movie. Okay. Now, metaphysically, this is what matters. Metaphysics are what, what matters. Okay. So scary movie, but it's boring. Now, this is what happens when it's boring. Your attention, you're no longer identifying and putting yourself in, in the situation. So what happens is your energy starts to come back to you. Now, what happens on the screen doesn't affect you. Think about it when you watch a boring movie. You're like, you're not into it. You're not affected. You don't get all scared or excited or whatever, right? You are non-attached or detached. Now, what's really going on is you're getting your energy back. Your energy is your power. All of your power is your energy. We would be inert without our energy. We would be consciousness that cannot create without energy. Okay. So through detachment or non-attachment to the, to the scary movie, to the thoughts in your head, to the emotions rolling around, to the physical sensations, whether pain or pleasure, when you no longer are attached to them, they're no longer a big deal. Think about the statement. They're no longer a big deal. Now look what happens to trauma. 
the reason why things are so traumatic is because we've given it such gravitas. We've made such a big deal about it. Oh, RJ, you don't understand. Oh, oh my, th oh, this happened. And I said, no, I, I get it. I totally get it. But the reason why it's so horrifying is because you're giving so much weight to, th to these things through your identification, hence your attachment. If we just made, if we just pretended for a second that everything was a boring movie, even your own personal movie, you would all of a sudden unplug all the trauma from it. And you would be empowering yourself beyond measure because all your energy starts to come back to you. Now you are empowering yourself through non-attachment or detachment. So this, this is really the key to realize tangibly, not mentally, mental understanding is worthless. Shay and I talk about this all the time because this is the, the intellect has been deified for a reason because it's easily manipulated and it's very limited. Please listen to what I just said. Okay, so detachment gives you your energy back. You are now empowering yourself when you stop giving things so much gravitas. Once you have your energy back, you can do anything. I don't care what it is. You can unparalyze yourself. You can literally create the life that you want. You do it with your energy. So we have to have our energy to create powerfully, to heal powerfully, to awaken ourselves powerfully. We do it with our energy. We do everything with our energy. So detachment, non-identification. I mean, I understand why it has a negative connotation because it empowers everyone. People think, oh, if I detach, they just won't care. I'm just, uh, wrong. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. You will be impassioned. You will be emboldened. It serves as a catalyst for everything, for your highest desires, for your imagination and creativity. So to come to come back to trauma, the key is to yeah, the key is to not watch uh, scary movies. Now the key <laughs> the key is to 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 not give things so much weight through your identification with it, and realize the real truth of everything. You're the awareness of thoughts, emotions, the body, and bodily sensations. You're not what you're aware of. You're the awareness. Yes. And just like the sun, you're untouched. Now, once we start to feel this, not just mentally understand it, it's worthless. Once we start to feel this, we are now truly alive. Now, does this work also for emotional traumas besides physical traumas? Yeah, everything, Jeff. Any imbalance, any imbalance. Because what we're doing is we're returning to what we really are, that I am, the self, right? And not what comes after. So one of the things that we can do if someone is uh, struggling emotionally, right? Let's say depression, right? Uh, or anxiety or an overactive mind, right? We can do that first thing that I showed you because it's really incredible. So let's say we're upset ab about whatever, right? Just ask yourself, who is it that is upset right now? Me, I am. Who am I? Instant dissipation. <laughs> it's I love Jeff, it how you just go blank. <laughs> yeah, because it's a story. The whole thing is a story. It's not what we are. And when and these are real, this is metaphysics. And metaphysics are what we used to call magic. We're moving energy. Now I can see the energy that we're moving, right? So this is part of how I developed this stuff, because I could actually see what I was what I was doing or the information I was being given or what I remembered, which is probably all the same thing, really. Uh, the, the story that we tell ourselves is the obstacle. So when we watch a movie, we know those characters aren't real. We know that. Neither is yours. It's just as fake. It's a story you tell yourself. Because as soon as you question it, it disappears. So, right, now most of us know at this point that if we're full of anxiety and all this kind of stuff, we're really wigging out about whatever, we make ourselves sick. Most people have now come to, you know, thank goodness, right? We now know we have to take care of ourselves mentally, emotionally, physically, right? We're at that level where I'm making myself sick because I'm so stressed out. Okay. Whatever conceptualized reality that we create for ourselves, 
the body then has the tangible experience of that. Right? That's the mind-body connection in one sentence. Okay. We now know that if we make ourselves crazy, so to speak, we make ourselves sick. Jeff, the other side of that is also true. So by experiencing an increased or expanded state of consciousness, the body also has the tangible experience of that as well. And this is part of the paradigm shift. For some reason, we thought it only worked one way. It does not. It works the other way as well. So through this tremendous expanded state of consciousness, your body has that experience as well. And in this expanded state of consciousness, it is very difficult to be sick. And in this expanded state of consciousness, we can then make the body have that experience, just like whatever conceptualized reality we create, the body has the tangible experience of that. Expand your mind to this point of divinity, of limitless, of a limitless nature, because it's true. Your body then literally starts to repair itself because it has to. The body follows the mind. It has to. So that, as I said to me, that's part of the paradigm shift. And when we operate that way, the results that you get are they're beyond anything because now we have a different understanding. We're doing different things. You get a different result. Now, when you're doing the paradigm shift, it's the mind changing, but emotional traumas are, I would assume, are also mental. So shifting the mind heals the mind, just like the, it heals the body. You Correct? got it. Yeah, abs- absolutely. So my understanding is that you know, when we have a thought, right? It's the identification with the thought that gives it its weight. Okay. All thoughts are equal in weightlessness. All of them. They're like a cloud, every thought. It's our believing in the thought that gives it its weight and its gravitas and its, its, uh, its dominion over our consciousness by believing in the thought. Now, when we believe in the thought, what's actually happening metaphysically is that we are bathing that thought in emotion through identification. So what's actually happening is we are emotionalizing the thought through the identification with it, right? Now, once we have a thought and we emotionalize it through the identification with it, the bathing of it in the emotion, now we take an action. So it takes those two things for, this is what I've found through my own higher consciousness, is that those two things have to take place in order for us to make an action, okay? Now, thoughts and emotions are not what we are. So in other words, we're taking ourselves further and further and further away with every thought and emotion from what we really are. The painter is not the painting. And as we keep thinking and emoting, we're creating a bigger story for ourselves, and we're taking ourselves more and more and more out of alignment. So the key is to be able to do these little things that I just talked about. Pretend you just arrived here, no past, no future. Everything goes back to normal. Now, that is the starting point for self-repair and self-healing. You don't heal yourself through thought. You don't heal yourself through emotion. You don't heal yourself through belief either. That's spiritual fiction. You heal yourself prior to those things because that's what you are prior. The divinity and the perfection is prior to all of that. So as you, that's the starting point. So as you return to that, you're putting yourself back in harmony. The body wants to repair and heal itself. We get a cut, it scabs over, right? New cells are being born constantly. The body wants to repair it. We keep misprogramming it because we haven't gained dominion over the mind. And once we gain dominion over the mind, the energy drops down. Now we're in this meditative state, and now we have some space. Now we can do metaphysical exercises that bring higher frequency energy through our own higher mind right directly into our body. To, to talk about just for a second about unworthiness, okay, which is just something, you know, people buy into from the matrix, mm-hmm. okay? So I, we have the magic trick. We have the remedy for that. It's very, it's very simple. Like all of this stuff, it's all very simple and direct in, in one second. So if someone is feeling very unworthy, right, it's, that's your character. So just ask yourself, well, who is it that feels unworthy? Well, me, I do. Who am I? It's gone. So every time stuff is coming up, and let's say it's overwhelming, right? You're upset. Who is it that's upset? Well, me, I'm upset. Who am I? I'm really angry right now. I'm frustrated and I'm angry. 
Who is it that's angry? Well, me, I'm the one who's angry. Who am I? Every time the inauthent inauthenticity arises, question it, and it'll disappear. Mm -hmm. The key is not to entertain it and figure it out. Right, which is and we're and that's that's what the programming here. Mo, oh, you really need to dive into that, Taya. You really need to, you know, talk to a therapist. You need to do this and that. You need to do your shadow work and all this kind of nonsense. Nonsense. It's not self mastery. Call it into question because it's an illusion. It doesn't belong to you. Mm. So if someone's upset, someone's hurt, someone's angry, someone's depressed, someone doesn't feel worthy, call it into question. Who doesn't feel worthy? Well, me. I don't. Who am I? Let that story disappear. It's not you. It's an illusion. It's a spell. Hmm. And these are the magic tricks that just get rid of it in, in seconds and keep doing it. Many of us have had many, many lifetimes and many, many different experiences. And through those things, we have acquired and bought into lots of things that are not palatable to who and what we really are. So every time for this for these things to be released, you have to question them as they come up. Don't ruminate it on them. Don't figure them out. It's, it's pointless. You don't need to. It keeps it around. Mm -hmm. Just question who is it that feels unworthy? Well, me. I I'm on I, I'm the one who feels unworthy. Who am I? All these things will leave. You have to give it the opportunity to leave. As stuff comes up, don't grab it and ruminate on it let me figure that out let me do this let me do no don't don't touch it it'll leave you it doesn't belong to you what about the energy that's already in someone's body who's experienced trauma because trauma is, is actually not necessarily the event but our reaction to the event and if it's not dealt with properly like animals can deal with trauma instantly properly without the cerebral cortex getting in the way and then they're fine they go on with their lives but humans we ruminate we think we process and i mean that's part of our human state that's the way our brain works with trauma um but so now that we've had a reaction to trauma that reaction lodges in the body in terms of energy it literally gets in our cells our muscles it contracts so what you and I were talking about the other day that was so fascinating to me was the alchemy of being present with that trauma that's already in ourselves that we've been working so hard for years to get rid of, um, or maybe just beginning to get rid of. But let's talk about that a little bit. Like, how does that work from an alchemy standpoint? Oh, okay. Great question. Great question. Okay. So let, let's go back to what I just briefly touched on and we'll, we'll, we'll go much, much deeper with it. Okay. So the, the body, what we call the physical body, right? Okay. It's made up of a, a bandwidth of certain, certain frequencies. Okay. That are attuned to and part of the local environment, which is why you only have a body when you're incarnate. Okay. So right. we have to have a spacesuit for the full immersion effect of physical incarnation. And the spacesuit is the vehicle, whether it's human, alien, or whatever. So it's, it is a bandwidth of frequencies that come together to, to form this. Okay. Now the analogy that we use is, is the sun, right? The sun is unaffected by rain, sleet, snow, tornadoes, and hurricanes. And it literally is, has absolutely no effect on the sun. Yet the sun gives birth to everything here, mm. gives birth to everything here, but it's completely unaffected by everything here. Hmm. hmm. Okay. So hmm. what we really are, right? What I call sentience, you can use the word soul for now, that's fine, but we, we have a more accurate, better definition in the book and so, things like that. So the soul is what gives birth to the body, okay? Now the soul is a much higher frequency, literally, okay? It's an indirect fractal of God, a direct fractal of your higher self, okay? The, the body-mind is attuned to the local environment. You're not from here. So when you start to reside as what you really are, it's such a high frequency by being able to be present. Okay. Which means non-thought by the way, being able to be present means not thinking and not emoting. Okay. Full presence. All right. Look into my eyes right now. So full presence, non-thought completely here. You can almost think of it as channeling if you want. It's not, but you can think of it that way. Okay. That which is what you are is the sun is such a supreme vibration 
that by doing nothing, it automatically dissolves and automatically heals and repairs all the lower frequency disharmony or trauma by doing nothing. Your frequency raises because the self is the supreme frequency. Your frequency raises when you're fully present. Mm -hmm. Alchemy is actually taking place. You are repairing yourself the way that we are capable of, plus some of the steps in the, in the book, we are capable of when we're working with ourself directly, the sun, the sentience, the fractal of God, the soul, the consciousness, whatever word you want to use. That's the supreme frequency. Reside as that, for that, within that, by that. That emanates like a radio broadcast, such a supremely high frequency that the trauma, all the stuff that I've gotten into our physical body and our body of energy is automatically alchemized. It's automatically cleansed. It's automatically healed by doing nothing because what we are is everything. What we really are is everything. And when you actually work with that, it heals all trauma. You don't even have to do anything. So health has been medicalized and we can get into thinking and why all the, why, what that really does. So Shay, to answer your question, and then I, th I think I will ramble into thinking because it, it, sure. it correlates to this. Sure. So by being fully present, the self is online. The self is the supreme frequency. Alchemy is starting to take place. You are healing and harmonizing your physical body and your body of energy by being present because it's the supreme frequency. Okay, so let's talk about thinking and emoting, but especially thinking because identification with the thought, we bathe with emotion. Okay, so that's what identific identification is, bathing the thought with emotion. And then once the mental body and the emotional body are sufficiently charged, then a human being actually takes action. And it's only until those two things have taken place. We can have all the thoughts we want, but until we bathe it with an emotion, the body is not sufficiently charged to take action. This is important to understand. Okay. So let's go to thinking because thinking is the problem. Thinking is the problem. Okay. From my perspective, all right. <laughs> all thinking comes from an identification with something, some belief, some concept, some experience. I don't care. I don't care what it is. All thought is always in context to something that you have identified yourself with. If you have no identifications, you actually can't think. So just sit with that for a second. You would be in perpetual meditation. Self-realization would be right around the corner, by the way. Okay. And so would self-healing, by the way. All right. So thinking is always in context to some attachment or identification that you, that you already have. Thinking locks human beings into the experience of time. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is important to understand. Time does not really exist. Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't authentically exist. People say time heal all heals all wounds. No, it doesn't. Detachment does. Mm -hmm. So we associate the detachment or non-identification that we were just talking about through time. Time doesn't exist, but normally through the experience of time, all these other things that we've, we've then experienced. And then we measure that through something called time. We're now over whatever happened. And we say, oh, you know, I'm over it. What, what really happened is you got detached from it. You no longer identify with the situation. Forget time. You can do that right now. Okay. Yeah. Really listen to what I'm saying. Okay. So thinking is always past, future, past, future, past, future. Okay. This is the limitation program that human beings put themselves in the logic and linearity program, which are subsets of space and time. Thinking creates the illusion of time and the delusion of knowledge. And now once you've locked yourself in that, you're incredibly limited because that's not how things actually are. That's the way the human mind simply processes it. It's not how things are. So this is important to understand. Healing can be what people call quantum. Okay. My healing was like that, right? One day I couldn't do this thing at all. The next day I was doing it like I had never lost the ability to do it. How's that possible? I'm explaining how that's possible. This is way beyond the lower consciousness or the logic linear mind through thought. When you don't use thought, you're not limited. So thinking traps human beings into the experience of time and to experiencing things in a linear fashion, which then leads to, I have to work through it mentally. I have to process it. I have to go through all these steps. You don't have to. 
And what many people, Shay included, are starting to understand, that actually doesn't really work, or it has very limited efficacy. The detachment or non-attachment accelerates this process by an order of magnitude, because you're no longer processing things through a logic and linear way. You're alchemizing and letting go. Alchemizing and letting go. So it comes back again to non-identification or non-attachment, which prevents incessant thought, which allows you to be fully present, which gives you all your energy and power. And now you can create in a way that is befitting what you really are, an immortal creator being. And what you just said about letting go, alchemize, let go, alchemize, let go. The thought just arised in my mind about the ability to let go, how easy or how difficult it might be to let go would resonate with maybe the, the severity of the trauma. Like if something wasn't such a big deal, we don't see it as such a big deal. It's easier to let that go and detach. If something is perceived as a, is a heavier trauma or, and, or does have physical effects in the world, say like we ramp up the, the, the physical illness or the severity of the trauma, then by the nature of that and our identification with that, it's harder to let go. Yeah. So Shay, what we're talking about is the meaning that we are ascribing to something. Okay. Now, if, if we were able to, to experience things or look at things from literally a completely detached higher consciousness perspective, we would realize that all meaning is ascribed, meaning that the deepest part of existence itself doesn't actually have a human meaning to it. We're saying it's a big deal or we say it's not a big deal. In and of itself, it's neither of those things. Okay, so we give it the meaning, we give it the gravitas. We then say, this is such a big deal. Oh my God, how am I gonna be able to handle this? How am I gonna be able to overcome this, right? We then take on identifications or attachments to what the doctor says, the chiropractor, your husband, your wife, your this, your that, I don't care, your guru, I don't care what it is. We then take that on too. So we are now ascribing meaning to something that actually has no real meaning to it. And it's by giving it the meaning is what gives it its, its weight. And the more weight we give something, the more impossible it becomes to transcend, transmute or overcome. So that's why I use the example <clears throat> for myself because I'm detached or non-attachment, right? I realized just the, the, the body was literally about as, as, you know, as bad as it gets, so to speak, in terms of health. But I know that I'm the sun. I know I'm not the body. So I was just like, well, this is a good challenge. I'll just put myself back together. I never made a big deal about it. Uh, I still don't. I, I never even had a thought that I wouldn't be able to, to put myself back. And I really mean it, as bizarre as that sounds, because I didn't give any meaning to it. It's just a challenge. I'll simply put myself back together. I understand the metaphysics and protocols of self-healing, which is why I wrote the book and, teach, you know, and, and do all this stuff. So we give it the meaning. Do not. Do not give it any meaning. And if you don't give it any meaning, it remains light. And if it's light, you'll be able to work with it. If you say it, what a big deal it is, how heavy it becomes, you're, right? the self-talk, how difficult that's going to be for yourself when you tell yourself how difficult it is, how heavy this is. Oh, I have cancer. I have paralysis. I have whatever it is. It's just a temporary body condition. It's all energy. It's a temporary body condition and it's all energy. So from that authentic, higher consciousness, metaphysical or magical perspective, you're going to now give yourself permission to do something about it. You're going to empower yourself to be able to do something about it. And that's also why I said that I was diagnosed with. I never said I'm a diabetic. I, I you know, I'm a, a, a hypo, I, whatever the term would be for hypothyroid. I never said I'm a, never. I said I was diagnosed with. And I even said that I'm experiencing temporary paralysis. Temporary. Even though I was told, you know, this isn't temporary. Get your house retrofit. I was told this by everybody. Every, everybody, well-meaning, highly educated, mm -hmm. people who actually only had their, my best interest. They really did. But no disrespect. They don't know what they're talking about in terms of self-healing or metaphysics or magic. 
They have no idea about that stuff. So everyone, don't give things such gravitas. It won't weigh you down. You'll be able to transmute and transcend whatever condition that you're, that you're temporarily experiencing when you don't assign such, such depth of meaning to it and such gravitas, because that will weigh you down and, and make your trans, transcendence impossible for yourself just by the story you're telling yourself. So what, what fosters this, Shay, as you know, is the ability to be present and for that to become the new default setting. Right. Okay. You, everyone, not just RJ, not just Shay, this doesn't matter. Everyone will start to experience what it is I'm talking about in regards to being the sun and not the weather. Okay. The body mind produces thoughts, emotions, bodily sensations, rain, sleet, snow, tornado, hurricane. Okay. The body mind produces those phenomena. Okay. You come before thoughts. You exist before there's a thought. You exist before there's an emotion. You exist before there's a bodily sensation. You exist before you incarnate it into the body. So being able to be present, and we can use any one of those magic tricks that are, that are in the book, <clears throat> and we can do one right now in a second if people are un unfamiliar with magic tricks, but this will foster this for everyone. Forget about having to have these... Uh, unusual perspective or unusual abilities. They're not a prerequisite at all. I will also say this, all these unusual abilities or however you want to say that, everyone has this. Everyone has this. They're aspects of the self. Forget body, mind. Forget that. I'm talking about what you really are. Uh, clairsentience, clairvoyance, clair, claircognizance, all the clairs. They're all aspects of the self, what you really are. Everyone has them. I just remembered how to use them. That's, that's all. Okay. So how do we start to, to bridge this gap from this different understanding to being completely caught up and uh, stuck in the ego mind identity? And the foundation of your ego mind identity is identification with your body. Okay. That's the foundation of the human character that you create. Okay. So one way we can do this is start to normalize simply being present. Yeah. Okay. And you can think of that as meditation. Okay. And the self is meditation. What you are comes before thinking, before emoting, before bodily sensations. Okay. So the self, what you are is meditation. So what that really means is there's no effort to meditate. Okay. The reason why it's so difficult or some of us have such a problem meditating from my perspective, is because we haven't been taught properly. That, that, that's number one. Number two, we're in a foreign hostile environment inside a suit in the lowest frequencies possible. This is not easy mm. and nor is it supposed to be by the way. So mm -hmm. this is not easy. So we're bombarded with stimulus. And so this, this leads to survival mode, which is just thinking, 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 thinking to survival mode. Okay. So let's come back to the self is meditation, which means it it's effortless because you're already meditation. We're just covering it up. Okay. And I'll prove it. Meditation that's in the book and all the, all the crazy ramblings that I talk about as Shay, Shay well knows. Okay. We can all meditate in one second, all of us, all of us. So let's do it right now. Okay. So all I want you to do these two eyes, your physical eyes, I want you to pretend they're not connected to your brain. Okay. You can't think. No, <laughs> I right. can't. <laughs> right. Now, let's look at this massive paradigm shift in one second. Okay. Many of us have struggled and tried diligently to meditate. Can't meditate. I've tried and tried and tried. I can't do it. I can't do it. Okay. You went from not being able to meditate, mm. trying and trying and trying, to meditating effortlessly in one second. Think about this, okay? This, these are the metaphysics that are now available to humanity, okay? These are the higher understandings of how things actually work. This is real magic. Make no mistake about it. Metaphysics and real magic with the CK are the same thing. Magic is accessing and utilizing the energies that lie outside of physical sensory perception. That's magic, that's metaphysics. I do magic, I understand metaphysics. So everyone, I can't meditate. Yes, you can. And you can do it without trying. 
and you can stay that way. That being present, accept yourself so fully that you can be effortlessly present. These eyes not connected to your brain. Now the beingness is online. Take your beingness, put it into your doingness. Beingness into doingness. Look how easy this is. Look how it is effortless. Do you know why it's effortless? Because the truth doesn't require your participation. Hmm. Lies do. Mm -hmm. This is what we really are. Effortless creator being, pure awareness, the awareness of everything that is going on, the awareness of thoughts, the awareness of emotions, the awareness of bodily sensations, the awareness of experiences. It doesn't touch you. What you are is unsullied and untouched from whatever happens here, just like the sun is untouched from everything. We just have to start working with ourselves in this way. Very simple, quarter of a second or half a second magic trick. The book's filled with magic tricks. And Che will tell you magic trick after magic trick after magic trick, right? But they're tangible and they're immediate. And that's how you know they're the truth. You can feel it. So everyone just start normalizing. These, these two eyes not connected to your brain. Can't think, stay that way. Now, I'm going to add one thing to that to make it very easy for everyone to understand, okay? You don't need to think about anything. I'm going to say it one more time because I know people are going to be like, oh, no, I got a busy life, RJ. You're crazy. Uh, you don't understand. Oh, uh, hear me out. Hear me out. Okay. I got a busy life too. Okay. <laughs> so, he so hear me out. Okay. Your subconscious mind has taken care of thinking, and I'm going to prove it to you. You don't have to think because your entire life is memorized. Your entire life is memorized. It's an aspect of the subconscious mind. That's why people do past life regression and hypnosis. Why is that? Because everything is already embedded within your subconscious mind. That's why. Okay. That's the truth. So let's look at it. You see a chair, you know how to sit. You see a bed, you know how to lie down. You know how to wash yourself, feed yourself, clothe yourself. You get in your car, you know how to drive. You know where the store is. You know where work is. You see a, you see a mug, you know how to drink from it. Sit with what I'm saying. Sit for a second. Your whole life's memorized. Your whole life is memorized. I don't mean in some woo-woo, literally. You have nothing to think about. Two eyes, not connected to your brain, stay present. Don't worry, your subconscious mind's taking care of everything. Now let's add one more thing to this because people are terrified at the idea of not thinking. Oh, it's total liberation. You'll finally feel like yourself. And actually, you'll create the life in a far more powerful way when you work this way. Okay, so let's add one more thing to this. We're having a great conversation, and we're talking about, from a certain perspective, some fairly high-level metaphysics magic. Okay, and we go further, but that's, that's not the point. The point is that you understand every word I'm saying without thinking. Yes. Now, let's look at this. Let's just add to what I said. Your whole life's memorized and understanding, even this stuff, even real metaphysics, real magic, you understand it without thinking. There's nothing to think about. I mean it. There's nothing to think about. The reason why we're constantly thinking is because we're in a fear-based survival mode reactionary state. All we have to do is stop normalizing Think, 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 because now you know, just prove it to you that you don't need to think about anything. Start getting good at being present. Your health, your quality of life, your ability to manifest, you name it, all will increase by an order of magnitude just by doing these simple things. So you can meditate in one second, and now you realize you don't have to think about everything. You are going to feel so much better from this moment on because you're not going to be using your energy nonstop to think and emote and give such meaning to everything. You don't have to do that. You don't. And as soon as you start working with these metaphysics, with this magic, you'll start to feel more like yourself. And when you feel more like yourself, you'll create the life that is more reflective of what you really are, a perfect, divine, immortal creator being. 
within now, okay, now contains everything. Okay, and you can only experience the immeasurable I am within the now. Now, this completeness, this fullness, this this freedom, this love, joy, power, passion, peace, everything is within now. Now, if all of that is not good enough, then you have let your ego mind identity rob you of everything by taking you out of now. Once you're out of now, you will realize you have nothing. Nothing. The ability to stay present effortlessly, perpetually, is the ultimate. If we just see things as experience and we don't label them, Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not a fan of labels because they're prisons. And by labeling something, you give it power. So even when we start to use the word, and I understand there has to be some bridge because th th there has to be a bridge, right? But the end result is it's just experience. Now right. that's through non-identification or detachment. Now, when we can start to view that the, this is just experience, it's going to be, we are now empowering ourselves to transcend it. But if we see it as so heavy, so traumatic, so awful, et cetera, et cetera, yada, yada, yada. And I'm not dismissing any of this stuff. I'm simply saying this is a lower consciousness perspective that creates density, that actually makes things difficult because we now we trap ourselves through the identification and then the aspect of past, future, space, time. Now we have to work everything through, through logic and linearity. We have to discuss it. We have to talk about it. We have to, you certainly can, or you can do magic and start to work with metaphysics and you can actually increase the efficacy of the evolution of your consciousness as well as your self-healing and your road to self-realization. So it's just experience. That's it. If we don't label it, it won't have such, a, such an effect on you. And that's really the key. Trauma, is, trauma by definition, is effect, neg negative effect. Okay, what if it was just an experience? Then how traumatic is it? We have to understand the words that we use because they, they carry such great weight to them. That's why we spell words. We're casting a spell on ourself. Every time we talk, every thought that we have, we're casting a spell on ourself. Really and legitimately, that's what's happening. We get meaning from words from the, from the, uh, the effect that the vibration has upon the ether. And that effect, by definition, becomes the meaning. So what it is that you're saying to yourself is you're literally spelling yourself every time you say something to yourself, mm -hmm. which is why I'm obsessed with meditation and total clarity, right? Which breaks all spells, right? The more that we can learn to work with ourselves in this way, the more you're going to feel like yourself and not the matrix, not your ego mind identity. You're not going to feel miserable, anxious, depressed, or angry, lustful, on and on and on. You're not going to feel that way. You're going to feel like yourself. Now, all of a sudden, that self will elevate every single aspect of your life without you doing anything, without you doing anything, without you acquiring anything, without you becoming anything, without you having to go to Tibet, sit mm -hmm. with the master, without having to go here. To, you don't got to do any of that. You are the master. You are the master. Eternally, always. I'm just making you see it. I'm reminding you of that. I'm reflecting that back to you. That's all. It's already in you always forever it's not going anywhere embrace it it's you right but when we start stop giving such a meaning and just see it as experience remember the sun's untouched whatever happens here is just an experience it comes and go your incarnation is just an experience it's all it is and the second you're out of your body you're going to look back at your body with total indifference we should start now start now because the quality of life, the joy that you feel is what you are. And it's only through not identifying with experience. This, this is just playtime, as crazy as that sounds, because we've lost that joy. But we've lost that joy because we're identifying with everything that's here. Mm -hmm. when, we, when we no longer attach ourselves to the horror movie, to the horror movie of the 21st century, when we <laughs> no longer attach ourselves to the horror movie, you realize that you're okay and this is just an experience.
Same with mental, emotional, or physical trauma. And I know what that's like, uh, you know, at very high levels, if, if you will. Very traumatic. It wasn't traumatic for me. I definitely, the pain was incredible. I didn't suffer though. But it's, be, and that's part of why I was able to transcend it and transmute it. Mm. It's because of this perspective. Yes. So that's why this is so, so important. So when we can get away from the labels, <clears throat> And I realize the finite mind needs needs something, but we have to go past the finite mind. The finite mind is very limiting, and there's no healing through thinking. There's no healing through thinking. There's no, I, let me just figure that out. No, please don't. Mm -hmm. Let it go. Let it go. Realize what you really are, and you'll realize there's nothing to figure out. You're already perfect as you are, all of us. So giving gravitas by labeling things makes it difficult, makes it heavy. And that then promotes a process. I see, and, it's, yeah. and it's often, Shay, as you know, it's a process that is very limiting in terms of the results that can be manifested from that because it's a limited perspective. So if we have a limited perspective, we're going to get limited results. It'll be long and drawn out through a logic and linear process. We do not have to operate this way. We operate with the truth. As I said, the truth doesn't require your participation. Lies do. And when we work in this way, all bets are off. We can really start to do anything.